Hey, good morning guys, it's Jim with Technosonic and here we are with our fifth installment of Radio 101. We're glad you're here and congratulations on making it through the first four installs. I know it's a little bit dry, but now we have the background knowledge and understanding to better program and support our customers with their Technosonic radios. So what we're going to do today is we're going to jump in and we're going to start looking at CPS. We're going to look at first the elements of CPS and then we're going to move into conventional configurations and personalities. So stand by, we're gonna move right away into Motorola CPS and let's take a first look at what we're gonna see and how we're gonna manage this radio. Thanks again for joining us, Radio 101. So guys, here's what we have when we open up Motorola CPS. When we get into our code plug, we're going to see a number of things. Um, if you have not already watched First Things First, the first Radio 101 episode, watch that. It's going to show you how to make your first copy of the radio and the download and make a baseline copy of that code plug. This is the baseline copy that we made of our code plug. And now we're going to start taking a look at the elements. Okay. So once our code plug is open, we have some information here that's going to help us in the long run. Now this is information that the radio is just kind of keeping an eye on and under, so we understand what we have. The first thing we see highlighted here is radio information. Okay, radio information just goes through and tells us the basics about the, the module that we're looking at. It gives us the model of the module, that's pretty much standard on all of them. The serial number of the module, that's an important thing if we have trunking and something that the operators are going to be looking for. Then we get into the bands that are enabled. Okay, so typically we see three bands, guys. This has it broken into five. We have the VHF band. If it's enabled, it'll say true. UHF one and UHF two are actually just UHF band and our 8,000 modules. So UHF, true. And then we have seven, 800. Again, we don't really break these apart in the software. 764 to 870 is the band but it is shown here 700 and 800 megahertz capable. It gives us the code plug version. It gives us the firmware version of the model itself. Guys, this does not have to, those don't have to sync. You could have an R14 firmware and version 25 CPS and they will work together. Okay, so this is the kind of information you find in radio information. It's not something that we're gonna change or need but it is a good spot to go if we have a question about firmware or where we're at with the radio. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at here is radio wide. Okay, radio wide just tells us some basics about the, the radio itself, the time format, the date format. Okay, if there are alert tones are turned on or not, this may be a problem for us. Um, alert tone, tones going off in the aircraft can sometimes mis be misinterpreted by a pilot. We want to keep an eye on that. Okay, then there's some other things in here. User information, passwords. Never put a password on a code plug. It completely eliminates anybody being able to help you if that ever got lost or you set the password and somebody else took over. Those kind of things happen. It's kind of a mess. Don't use passwords. Okay, and then some basic information here. Now, the TDFM 9000 series radio has some things that other radios don't. Rotary switch, um, some timings, you might have FPP enabled. Uh, so there's some information in here. Again, for the most part, you are not going to need to be in this area other than to know that's here and kind of to look around and see what's here. We encourage that. Okay, what we will be working on in the next few episodes is radio ergonomics. Radio ergonomics is where we are going to program what the face and how this radio looks and works. So basically, um, you know, if we need a button for to turn scan on, or we want a to program a button to act like a car stereo button and you can hold it and save a channel, those kind of things are done in radio ergonomics. And there's a number of pieces in here that we're going to look at, controls, display, and so forth, that are considerations for us. The next thing we're going to look at down here is conventional configuration. Conventional configuration. So conventional, conventional channels. This is where 
you and I can program different channels and put different frequencies into the radio. We're going to use conventional configuration. Okay, This is not what the customer is going to see. This is not what your operator is going to see. This is basically a tool set that we use to make adding channels simple. We're going to put, build the channels in the conventional configuration and specifically conventional personality right down here at the bottom. And then we take those channels or a mix of those channels and we move them into the zone channel assignment. Zone channel assignment is what the people see on the face of the radio. It holds the zone name and then we put channels into those zones and they can come out of multiple personalities. So a couple different things we're looking at. Radio ergonomics is going to be important to us. Conventional personalities are going to be important to us. Zone channel assignment is going to be important important to us. Those are the starting blocks for us and those are where we're going to start with our Radio 101 um, information. So that is what we're going to start with. We're not going to go any further than today than to just take a look at that. I want you to take a few minutes, play around with it, and then we're going to get into looking closely at the conventional personality and how we're going to set that up. So thank you so much for joining us for this short and simple version of Radio 101. And we will be back in just a bit with conventional personalities.